the bad boy for tonight, the Celestron 8-inch Reza. Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I am so excited to be in my backyard once again. It's been weeks of cloudy nights and I haven't had a chance to get my telescope out here at all. My plan for tonight is to shoot the Rosette Nebula. I haven't shot this object before. It's in the Orion constellation close to Betelgeuse. I've seen this Rosette Nebula shot with the 8-inch Raza and I'm really excited to see uh, what kind of detail I can pull from Toronto, being in a light polluted city. Um, but I do have the Celestron uh, light pollution filter in there, so that should help. And I also have uh, a 0% illuminated moon tonight, so that's another benefit. There are two new things that I've added to my telescope rig, and that is two different dovetail clamps. One for the guide scope and one for my mini PC. Uh, this should help uh, keep the telescope more balanced uh, because everything is on top of the telescope instead of poking up from the sides. And it actually helps with cable management as well. I'm able to tuck some wires underneath the computer uh, to keep them out of the way. In past videos, you guys have seen me do a lot of the telescope stuff outside where I'm uh, you know, uh, troubleshooting the night or showing you how it goes. Uh, but tonight I want to focus on the processing side. So I'm not going to spend too much time out here tonight with you guys. Um, again, I'm going to be inside showing you what I do with processing, some of the things that I do in Pix Insight that maybe uh, you could learn from or maybe you can tell me how I'm doing wrong. Um, but that's the plan for tonight. Uh, I'll see you guys once the sun sets and I'll talk to you then. All right, so the kid's gone to bed, the wife's inside studying. It's now time to play with the telescope. Uh, again, I'm so excited to be out here tonight shooting the uh, Rosette Nebula. Um, I haven't been out here in two months, so hopefully nothing goes wrong with the telescope break and I'm able to get a successful night uh, and then process an image at the end of this. One of the unforeseen problems that might happen tonight is uh, we're gonna hit about 14 mile an hour winds tonight, which might be a bit too much with this uh, dew shield. It might catch a bit of that wind and shake the telescope a bit, uh, but hopefully that isn't the case. I do have some nice fences surrounding my backyard, so hopefully that will be enough to uh, keep the wind at bay. Everything is set up. The telescope is balanced with the new gear on top. Uh, I've also polar aligned. The only thing I need to do now is go inside and focus and also do a star alignment. So as I said earlier, the plan for this video is to focus on processing an image in PixInsight. So I'm gonna start my imaging and uh, I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. Okay, you can't start uh, processing a Raza image without using your Raza shirt. I'm in PixInsight and uh, I have my data in front of me. This is my image after stacking 90 uh, 60 second exposure images. This also includes my calibration frames, which is uh, 35 dark frames and 35 flat frames. Processing an image like this in PixInsight uh, can take a lot of time. It really depends on how much effort you want to put into it and uh, the amount of tools and resources that you want to put into it as well. But I want this to be a, a semi-quick video while still going over some of the details and uh, decisions as to why I do one thing over the next. If you do want me to go into more detail, feel free to reach out in the comments if you have specific questions. Alright, so the first thing that I want to do is image inspection and color calibration. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a look at the image stats by going to process, um, image, ins image inspection, and statistics. And then I'm going to select my Rosette Nebula image and it will give me the RGB channels laid out here. What I'm looking for is the lowest median value readout. And right now I see that on the R channel it is 2.3 compared to the uh, green and blue channel. So what I'm going to do is go to processes, all processes and channel extraction. What I want to do is separate the RGB channels out from this image uh, so I can play with them individually. All I need to do is just drag this triangle over to the image. And as you can see, I have R, G, and B channels. Uh, let's minimize our image from the beginning. And let's also minimize our R channel because that's gonna be our reference channel. And what we're gonna be doing is actually using a process called linear fit. So let's go to process, all processes, linear fit. And we're gonna select R as our reference image here. 
The next thing that we're going to do is drag this over to our B channel. And what this is going to do is set that median readout closer to what the R median readout is. Um, I'm also going to do this to the G channel, and then I should have uh, a very even median readout between all channels. So that one's done for our B. Let's minimize this and bring it up here again. And then we'll do the same thing for our G channel. All right, now that that's done, uh, we can minimize this. We can also get rid of our statistics, put it up in the corner here, get rid of our channel extraction. I like to keep my things in the right hand side here, just so I can see my process and how I went through it. Um, I also take a screenshot of that so I can review it at a later time to see what my process was and if I did anything in a different order or in a different way. Uh, the linear fit, we're done with this, so I can uh, minimize that as well. And the next thing I'm going to be looking for is the channel combination. What this does is it just combines my R, G, and B channels. So select your R, G, and B channels as to where they're supposed to go. And click the circle button. This will give us our uh, combined image. And if we stretch this, we should see the Rosette Nebula. It's very faint, but you can see that there. Uh, you can also see a lot of the uh, noise that we have here from the light pollution that I get here in the city. I'm located in Toronto and uh, that's a Boral 9 zone, so I do get a lot of light pollution. Um, it is more minimized in my backyard because I don't have too many immediate uh, street lights around me, um, but it is everywhere, so. Okay, so the next thing I want to do after my channel combination is an automatic background extraction. Uh, I do use the dynamic background extraction, as you can see here, but I want to use the automatic background extraction uh, just as an example. So once I have the automatic background extractor tool open, go to target image correction and select subtraction and then drag this over to your image. What this is going to do is remove the gradient that we have in our image and uh, just leave us with that nice background and nebulosity and stars. So here's the image that we're going to end up keeping and here's that gradient that's being removed. As you can see, there is a bit of a gradient here, um, but if I stretch this a bit more, uh, you can really see that defined gradient that's going to be removed from this image. So we can remove this, just get rid of it. Uh, we're going to minimize this, put that right here, and this is what we're going to be uh, taking a look at. If we stretch this, you can see that automatic background extraction removed a lot of the, uh, the background noise, uh, but we still have some stuff in the corner here that we can get rid of, this red area here. It does look a bit cloudy around this object, um, and I think we could do a bit better with the dynamic background extractor. So let's put this aside for now and use that as a reference. Open up our image that we have here again and then open up the dynamic background extractor. The first thing you're gonna do is click on your object here. And then the next thing you wanna do is click sample generation, generate. This is going to set a whole ton of points on your image, and what we're going to try to do is find the background uh, with these points. So as you can see here, I have a little uh, window on the right-hand side. Uh, this is referencing this uh, sample point. If I move this around, you'll see that that moves around as well. And what I want to do is find the uh, whitish areas. I don't want any of that black circle stuff. Those are stars. Uh, I just want the background. I also don't want this to be on any nebulosity. So let's move these around. and. Uh, Make sure it's not on any stars. Uh, this is also the more tedious part of the uh, processing task. That's why some people use the automatic background extractor, but I feel you can get a bit more detail if you use it uh, dynamically. All right, so once that's done, I'm going to collapse the sample generation here, uh, expand the target image correction, and then same with the automatic background extractor, I'm going to select subtraction. Next, I'm going to press the checkbox, and it should get two images. I get my image that I'm returned with and then the gradient that I'm subtracting from it. So this should be similar to what we got with the automatic background extraction, but it should be uh, more dialed in. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's more defined. So let's get rid of that and take a look at what we have with our automatic background, with our dynamic background extraction. That actually looks pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. So if we take a look at this for a comparison, this is our original image, minimize that. This is our automatic background extraction. And this is our dynamic background extraction. So you can see in the corners here, it did a way better job at cleaning up those corners. Um, 
the there's no real big difference between this dark spot here and this this uh, more noisy spot. Um, it's kind of evened out here. Uh, so I'm going to keep my dynamic background extraction. I like this uh, method better than the automatic background extraction for this case. Uh, let's just close this and continue on with this. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is crop this image because I have a lot of artifacts around the sides here. And uh, yeah, it just needs to be cropped. So let's go to Process, Geometry, Dynamic Crop, and select our crop section. Let's just do... Let's do this. All right, uh, press the check mark and press this button here. Nice, I'm liking that crop. Let's continue on. The next thing that I like to do is background normalization. So let's open that up. Sorry, background neutralization. And to do this, what you need to do is select a preview of your background. So let's go inside the image here and find some background area and we'll create a new preview. Um, this looks good enough. And you don't want any stars in here, uh, you just want that background, so that will do. And uh, for our reference image here in the background neutralization tool, uh, we're gonna select that preview that we just made. So go down your list here, preview one. Okay, and the settings just as is are good enough. Uh, let's zoom out and apply it to our image. After the background neutralization tool, I sometimes do the color calibration tool, um, but I did some color calibrating already when I separated those RGB channels and then uh, combined them again. So I'm gonna leave them as is. Actually, let's just double check. We'll actually inspect this image again. Go to statistics and then open up image DBE. We can take a look at that median readout. And you can see they're all at uh, 2.09, around there. So that's fine the way it is. We don't need to do any more color calibration. Uh, sometimes if you do find uh, your image is a bit green, and I can see some green here, it is good to use the SCNR tool at this point. So SCNR, uh, make sure your color to remove is selected as green. And I'm going to lower the amount about 80 or so, uh, and then drag it onto my image. Nice, so it did clean up a bit of that green that was happening down here. Okay, now I'm going to move on to my noise reduction techniques. I do this before uh, any image stretching, and uh, I find that it's better to get rid of the noise before stretching that noise. Uh, so the first thing I do is create a luminance mask by clicking this button up here. And I also stretch this mask, so go to Process, All Processes, Screen Transfer Function, and then Processes, All Processes, Histogram Transformation. Uh, then stretch your luminance mask by clicking the nuclear icon here. This will stretch uh, your luminance mask, and I want to take this and drag it over to my histogram. Once it's on my histogram, I'm actually going to drag this and apply it to my image. And now this is going to look very uh, overexposed, but that's because I've stretched it twice. I have the stretch that I applied, and I also have it stretched again on the preview. So I'm going to cancel the preview, and you can see that it's just applied once, uh, which is nice. The next thing I'm going to do is select um, from the histogram transformation the luminance mask that I have here, and you'll see it in the histogram here. I'm going to cancel all my settings by clicking this button here. And then I'm going to play with the preview and bring down the brightness of this object. So I'm going to bring it down a lot. All I want really is the nebulosity and stars. So that might be a good mask to use. I know it looks like I've taken a lot away, but that's what I want. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to cancel the preview and apply it to my luminance. And I'll close off the histogram transformation and my screen transfer function for now. I do use these often, so I'll put them down here in the bottom, and we'll come back to those later. But we have our luminance mask that we're going to apply to the image. Um, let's drag this onto the image as a mask and minimize it and put it in the corner. And uh, the red here shows what it's protecting. So if you press Control shift i you can invert that mask. And in our case, we want to protect the, uh, the nebulosity and the stars, so red protects. Uh, we're doing that with this. And Control k will actually hide your mask, so we can just see the image knowing that the mask is still applied. 
So we're protecting our nebulosity here when we're doing our noise reduction. We just want to do noise reduction to the background area. Uh, so let's go to processes, all processes, and uh, multi-scale multi -scale linear transform. I do this in two steps. Um, the first step is using the luminance target. And the settings that I use here for noise reduction are uh, four channels. So the first is uh, three with an amount of 0 0.3 and an iteration of three. Next I do an amount of one, 0 0.5 and two iterations. And then on my third channel here, I use 0 0.5 0 0.5 again, and one iteration. The fourth layer that I have here, I'm leaving that as is, and I'm not applying any noise reduction. Um, but what we want to do actually is open up a preview, and just take a look at a section of our image. Nice. Okay, so this is what we're going to be applying a noise reduction to. We will see a bit of noise reduction applied to this. The mask isn't fully covering the nebulosity here, um, but yeah. So let's take our luminance here and apply it to the preview. This takes a bit of time. Uh, and yeah, we can flip between uh, what this took away. So you can see there's a, a lot of graininess here. Let me get in here. And when I revert it, you can see it's flattened all that out which is nice. So I do like that. Uh, what I did to my preview was nice. So let's apply it to the full image. Drag and drop onto the image. All right. Uh, next, we're going to try doing this to our chrominance target. So let's reset the multi-scale linear transform tool and click chrominance. Then we'll open up our preview again and get back in there. <coughs> Uh, for this one, I like to use seven layers. Seven layers here. Uh, the first one, uh, I'll do noise reduction with three, an amount of one, and uh, iterations of one. Uh, I'll do the same for this one here, so three, one, one. Um, and then I like to have a threshold of two, amount of one, and iteration of one. And then for the last one here, one, one, and one. Oh, that was two. There we go. Uh, I leave everything else as is and make sure chrominance is selected again and then I'll drag this over. So what I'm hoping this will do is remove the green and red tints that you see in my background. This process does take a bit longer because uh, you are processing a bit more layers, um, but actually it happened pretty fast on this computer. So let's zoom in here and get close to some of that noise and we'll flip back and forth to see what this change was. Okay, so yeah, you can see a lot of that color has been removed. Look up this top corner here. You can see red and yellow. When I click the uh, revert button, that is mostly removed. So I am liking what that's doing to my image. On a larger scale back here, you're not gonna see too much of a change, um, but it is happening. So yeah, let's go back to our image and apply this. This again will take a bit longer because we're applying it to the full image and we're using lots of layers, but actually it worked pretty quick there. That's uh, that's nice. Uh, now that we're done with that, we can remove our mask and close our preview. And then we can move on to stretching. All right, so the next step in my process is to stretch the image. Again, right now I'm only using a preview, so let's actually stretch the image. Um, I'm gonna open my screen transfer function and the histogram transformation tool. Make sure you've reset all the settings. And then I'm gonna click the stretch button here. Uh, I'm gonna zoom into my stretch here and change some of the parameters a bit. I don't want it to stretch uh, this aggressively. I'm gonna turn that down a bit. So let's select that. I'm gonna drag this over here and drag this a bit back. Nice. 
All right, so I think I'm gonna use this. I will be able to do some sharpening and some adjustments later on, um, but for stretching my image right now, I think this will do just fine. So next, I'm gonna drag this over to the histogram. Once it's on the histogram, I'm gonna drag this histogram onto the image. And again, it looks overstretched. That's because, again, we are overstretched. We have to close the preview. And it looks fine. Okay, next on my workflow is doing detailing and sharpening. Um, so I'm going to adjust the stars here as well as some of the nebulosity. I'll be able to select parts of the nebula and adjust its contrast. And what I'm going to do to, to start that process is use the range selection. Uh, click range selection. Press the preview button and you're going to get a white screen. Uh, the first thing you want to do is adjust your lower limit, start bringing it up, and you'll start to see your object. So I want to select a large section of my object. I wish I could not uh, have this light polluted area here show, but that's what I get with uh, living in Toronto. I'm going to lower the fuzziness a bit and add some smoothness. Nice. Uh, this is a good mask. I'm going to press the square here to generate a mask. We can close the preview here. And then we're going to apply this mask. And then minimize it. The next thing we're going to use is the localized histogram equalization. Um, so let's reset our settings here. As you can see, it already sets it at an amount of 1. I think this is a bit too harsh. I mean, it really depends on what you're looking for, but you can see what it's doing here when I when I lower this slider. It's trying to bring a bit of contrast uh, using that range selection that we used um, into the image. So we don't want it too aggressive. I like to use an amount of uh, 0 0.4 or 0 0.3 around there. And sometimes I actually apply this with a few different masks using the range mask selection. So this actually looks pretty good. Let's just compare. That's before, that's after, before, after. Nice, I like what it's doing. Uh, I'm gonna take this and apply it to my image. Uh, and then I'm gonna create another uh, range selection mask with this, but I'm gonna be a bit more aggressive and and select a lower limit. So I'm liking this. Uh, I'll keep the same fuzziness and other settings and I'll generate this as a mask. Close the preview and then oh, let's remove this mask first that we applied first and then apply our new mask to the image. Minimize this. Stick it up here. Minimize that, and then look. open up the local histogram equalization again in the preview. And let's apply a bit more. As you can see, it's getting towards the brighter parts of the nebula, and we want to uh, change a bit of the contrast in there. So that's what it's selecting. That looks nice. All right, close the preview and apply it to your image. So we're done messing around with some of the contrast in the nebula. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is star reduction. So let's remove this mask as well. Mask, remove masks. So we're gonna create a few masks uh, to do our, our star reduction, and uh, we're gonna use them interchangeably. So let's first create a star mask by going to Processes, Mask Generation, Star Mask. Uh, I found my noise threshold. A good one that I use is something between 2.4 and 3. Sorry, 0 0.2 or 0 0.3. My scale, I like this as 6. Uh, large scale zero, small scale zero, and uh, compensation one. Uh, my smoothness, bring that down to 12, and I like to use binarize. Uh, the other settings down here are I leave the defaults, and then I click the square here to generate a mask. I'll take a look at what this mask looks like by dragging it over this image and seeing if it captured all the stars that I want. Um, doesn't look like it captured too many, but let's see. So if we make this and stick it over top, uh, you can see it missed some stars. So let's try making a different mask generation. Uh, let's change our noise threshold to 2.2. Our scale will bring back down to five. 
and we'll leave everything else as is. Let's click the square and generate a new mask. And hopefully this is a bit better. It seems like it's got more of the stars, so that's nice. Uh, yeah, let's use this. It doesn't have the big stars, like I can see it's missing one right here. Um, that's fine. That's a big feature that we're not going to be able to capture with this, and we're not going to be able to really reduce that. Um, but the other ones here we will be able to. So yeah, let's put this mask aside and uh, open up the deconvolution process. Deconvolution. Uh, we're going to minimize our star mask here because we're done with that, and take a look at this. So, uh, there's a lot of things that you can do with the deconvolution tool, a lot of things that I'm not too uh, familiar with, but I do have a book. This Inside uh, Pix Insight book by Warren Keller uh, will definitely teach you how to use this and how to use the proper settings and use the proper masks that you should be using, um, but I haven't got there yet. It's too advanced for me. Um, I'll get there eventually. In the meantime, uh, some of these default settings are good, but I do like to add something that I've created, which is the star mask. So I'll click the de-ringing here, expand this, uh, click local de-ringing, and then I'll select the star mask that I have. Uh, before I apply this, what I want to do is create a luminance mask for this first. Uh, so click that button there to make it a luminance mask, and simply just drag this onto your image. I'm going to minimize this. All right, once we have all that done, we can now do deconvolution on this image. Uh, use the triangle here to drag it onto your image and let it do its thing. This is after and before. Very light, you actually can't see too much. Let's get in here. Zoom in a bit and then do a before and after. All right, so you can see it minimizes them a bit. Makes them more, more pinpoint. Uh, but we're not done with this. We're going to use another tool here. So let's minimize the deconvolution. Remove our mask. And then take our star mask that we had and apply it to this image. Make sure it's on there. Control K. Nice. All right, now that I've applied my star mask, I'm going to open up the morphological transformation tool and make sure the operator is morphological selection. Uh, the amount and uh, selection here is important. If you have anything above 0.5, you're increasing the star amount. If you have anything below 0.5, you're decreasing. Um, for my structure element here, I like the circle operator, as well as choosing a size of seven. Uh, you can choose different sizes in here, but yeah, size seven works well for me. Once I have all this applied, and I know that my star mask is applied, I just drag and drop this in. Let's get close so we can see what it does. Nice. So you can see it did reduce the stars a bit. They're not as bloated, which is nice. I like what it did. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Let's remove our mask. And next we're gonna be working on our saturation. So we're going to create a luminance mask because the only thing we want to change the saturation and contrast and all the other things for is our nebulosity and our stars. We don't want to change that for the background. So take your luminance mask and apply it to your image and then minimize it. And then open up process, all process, curves, transformation. Uh, from here, click the preview button and we'll preview what we're doing, all the changes. And I'm going to select a few points here. Do a slight curve, and you can see that added a bit more contrast to our image, which is nice. I like that. Um, I'm actually going to close the preview and apply this to our image just as is. Nice. And the next thing I'm going to do is clear these settings here, open up a preview again, and play with the saturation. I'm gonna bump up the saturation just a bit. You can see it gets a bit more red. And I'm also gonna use the C channel here and bring that up as well. Not too much. Nice, that looks good. Maybe a bit too much saturation. 
Uh, you can also play with the hue if you like. Um, let's just see what it does. I like that, I'm gonna keep that. Let's close the preview and apply it to our image. And yeah, so at this point there are many things you can do to this image. You can try to create another mask and just uh, dampen the background a bit, or you can try to select the nebulosity a bit more defined and bring up some of the other features. Uh, I've also seen some people subtract a star mask from this, just so you're not uh, oversaturating the stars too much. But I do like a bit of saturated stars on my image. I do want to see a bit of that blue and orange, um, but I don't like uh, too oversaturated of stars. Uh, I think I used a nice mix in this image, and uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. I'm still new to learning PixInsight, um, so I'm always learning new things and changing my techniques. Uh, this is what my technique is right now, but it's definitely going to change in the future. I'm continually learning new things about PixInsight from YouTube and books that I have. Uh, one book that I can reference, actually, is from Warren Kelly. It's called Inside PixInsight, and it's a really good uh, resource for every tool that you have in PixInsight. If you really want to find out what uh, each checkbox and slider does, this is the book for you. Uh, anyways, this is it for my PixInsight tutorial. Again, this was just a quick overview of what I do. Uh, maybe as a beginner, you can use some of these features uh, in your own processes. And if you are more experienced, maybe you can help me out a bit and show me or tell me what I'm doing a bit wrong. Regardless, I hope you guys learned something and I hope you enjoyed what you've seen and I'll see you in the next video.